Okay, now hear me out, Leanne. It's been a little bit since we had a chat. Need to check in on everybody, see how they're doing, and then we'll get back to kicking butt in the arena, okay? Okay. Well, let's crack you, people. And I'm here, and welcome back to the Jade Empire. In the last one, we made our way up to, uh, to the qualifier division of the Imperial Arena and defeated Hapless Han. In this one, we're going to take some time and talk to our party members, see how they're holding up. So let's start off with Dawnstar. Poor Chang. If only I hadn't sent him on such a dangerous mission, he'd still be alive. Poor Chang. If only. Let's talk to you in a second here. Um. Well, it looks like your contact with the Lotus Assassins will be bad for your reputation, but good for our goal. I can't agree with this. You don't know what you're getting into. You don't know the danger they represent. Really? What did you see while hiding in your swamp? I've observed Death's Hand for years, both in the palace and elsewhere. You could have four faces and a different name and wardrobe for each, and you still wouldn't understand. Death's Hand is not what he seems. Then what, pray tell, is he? I don't know. But his power does not come from study or skill. He is something darker, and we should not be trying to enter his lair. It sounds like Sagacious Zoo wants to go back into hiding. Or perhaps the nursery? Pay no attention, not everyone is as weak as he is. Honestly? I'm going to side with Zoo on this one, because here's the thing, here's the thing, Leanne. I understand that you've been observing him for years. Sagacious Zoo was a member of the Lotus Assassins. I think he knows better than anyone what this dude is capable of, okay? I'm just saying. So, I need you to sit your butt down. I'm going to take Zoo's side on this. Thank you for listening. But I want more than caution. Neither of you understand what they are capable of. You aren't doing much to add to our understanding. Go sulk in the corner like you're accustomed to doing. This is not helping anything. Are we any closer to getting to the Lotus Assassin so this accursed woman will help us find Master Lee? Oh, she spits fire at last. Now I see how the child left her little village. She has some spirit in her after all. And surprisingly, she's right. You've made contact with the Lotus Assassins, but haven't shown them why they need to fully accept you. The Executioner wants to see you excel in the arena. Progress far enough, and he will gladly recommend that you be recruited. If you prefer, you could still seek out the Inquisitor by speaking with Scholar Dun Gao in the Scholar's Garden. I want to ask more about this evidence that you We've gone over this. Death's Hand is using the prisoners who should be working on the wall to construct some sort of personal army of golems. My father probably knows something, but not the true danger of it. I need to show that Death's Hand intends to seize control. The Lotus Assassins act for Death's Hand. There has to be proof of his evil intent in the Lotus Assassin Fortress. That is where you need to go. Okay, I want to talk about you. Why has your servant given me a gift? Did you like it? I thought you might want a little assistance. Consider it a small token of my favor. I appreciate you, Gift. I thank you for your courtesy. A woman always likes to hear when her gifts are appreciated. It is difficult for one of my rank to give gifts, even one so simple as what I gave you. A princess is not normally allowed to show favorites. Then why take the risk? Better that I give it away before Death's Hand carts it off. He has been quite brazen. Besides, it was mine by birthright to do it as I wish. Must I always be dictated to by tradition, despite my respect for it? Sometimes I want what everyone else has, to be myself. And to be myself, I gave you what I wished. I thank you for your gift. I didn't forget to know that she took it Hmm. Well, you're polite, at least. Most nobles take gifts as a matter of course, especially those from a woman. But the price I may pay for helping you could be greater still. I am destined for the throne, destined to rule the Empire after my father, but... 
That will be meaningless if Death's Hand keeps his hold on my father's mind. I fear one day he may try to... interfere with the Imperial succession. Or perhaps convince my father that he should be Emperor by marriage. Hmm. Your flower would wither under such harsh conditions. You forget yourself. You should not try so hard to flatter a princess. The attentions of royalty have their own price. In any case, I would never allow Death's Hand such liberty. I would bite my own tongue before allowing that man to touch me. I'm sorry, I've ruined the mood. We should continue our talk another time. First, we must expose Death's Hand, reveal his treachery and manipulation. Okay, goodbye for now. I wish you luck. Once you have gained the trust of the Lotus Assassins, we will plan how to proceed. Okay, so, uh, I did miscalculate a bit. If you go ahead and do the, do the, uh, Lotus Assassins, you just leave. So, oh no, never mind. Huh. Huh. How have I not noticed that? Okay, so, funny story. Um... Usually when I do this, I usually when I play Jade Empire, I usually talk to all my characters the moment we land in the Imperial City and get all of it out the way. Zoo does walk off at this point, but I thought something else was going to happen. Well, while we got in here, let's talk to Zoo. Give his opinion on things. So, get Zoo. I trust your plans go well, despite the dangers you face and inflict. Is there something I can do for you? Well, what do you think of our current situation? Your dalliance with the Lotus Assassins could be disastrous. I cannot force you to do otherwise, but you may eventually force my hand. Do I want to go back to my other questions? I will answer if it suits me. Okay, um... What are your feelings on the Imperial City? How powerful are the Lotus Assassins here? They are as powerful as fear allows them to be. Not the specific information you are looking for, I'm sure, but... You did ask about my feelings. If their tactics have not changed, everyone fears them as children fear the shadows, never knowing what might come. They sound more like outlaws than an arm of the Emperor. They are not outlaws. Their orders come from Death's hand and he is the will of the Emperor. At least, that is how it was meant to be. Pardon my outburst. Every act of the Assassins has the approval of the Emperor. We were supposed to reflect his glory. That is why some actions should never have been ordered. Are you referring to the incident that prompted your exit? The Lotus Assassins were once the Order of the Lotus under Prince Kin, spiritual advisor to the Emperor. During and after the attack on Dirge, changes were made. As flames seared the sky, enemies of the Emperor faced a new threat, Death's Hand. He assumed command of our order, and we began silencing people. Some were killed only to serve his warnings. Others... Others had done nothing except be near his enemies. You were ordered to kill innocents. Why even consider it? I am no stranger to death. That alone is not enough to disturb me, but I see only weakness in targeting innocence, peripheral to the real enemy. Weakness suggests losing the right to rule. Can you see how that shook my faith in the Empire? You seem to see why I had concerns. Perhaps you might understand. I have not said everything, and I have not yet decided if I will. But I see something in you that may set things right. We will see. For now, what else do you need? Um... How do you feel about the plan to join the Lowe's Assassins? I will need your knowledge. It is a foolish idea. You do not understand the seductive nature of the Assassins, and what they do to recruits. Enlighten me. It does not take much to make a person forget who they are. With a little effort, they can be pushed past any morals they might have claimed. Cloaked in service and honor, even the most depraved of barbarity soon becomes unremarkable.
I will find a way to enter without participating in their foul ways. A naive assumption. Perhaps you can avoid direct participation, but their fanaticism will still affect you. The rot that is Death's Hand permeates the complex. He was made our leader during the raising of Dirge. He replaced Sun Kin, who along with the glorious strategist, never returned from that campaign. I did not serve Death's Hand long, but when the orders came, he never questioned. The connection is more direct than loyalty, and he instills that in his Lotus assassins. That is how so many were driven to kill without cause, and why I decided no more. Zoo, why does this trouble you so much? You've killed many before and since. There was more to that event. You are right to sense it. But I have kept my silence for so long that I must carefully consider the repercussions of breaking it. I must inevitably deal with my demons. Your destiny demands it. But I must also know that those demons will be put to rest, not exploited. For many years, I did nothing. If I had known Master Lee was the glorious strategist, so much could have been resolved one way or another. In the end, I will have to trust that you are enough his student to find a way to protect what I cannot. We each have our path, Zoo. I will listen when you are ready. So you claim. I am not accustomed to words having such weight. We should... We should resume your mission. You have far to go. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. And that's it for Zoo. So we learned quite a bit there. Even with Zoo being as reluctant as he is to even speak on things, we learned, and we actually learned this in a loading screen, that the Lotus Assassins were once called the Lotus Order. They were dedicated to spiritual enlightenment and... The protection of well basically 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 they were like jedi and you know that might be holdover roots from virus time working on the national republic but they were essentially like the jedi of of uh, star wars they were not initially combatants they were not initially on the front lines they were not initially just resolving issues through force they were more dedicated to spiritual enlightenment and helping out Behind the scenes, out of the way, the people of the general, uh, you know, ruling order. But unlike uh, the the Jedi who had been forced into combat due to, at least with regards to the movies, anyway, due to the Clone Wars uh, and the droid and the in uh, the machinations of Darth Sidious, in this one, it seems like they were initially usurped by a man who replaced the youngest emperor the youngest brother of the emperors of the, of the three uh, of the of the three uh well at least the youngest brothers of the of the, uh, of the, of the royal family son ken and he ended up making them into the lowest assassins and we're learning through zoo that the reason why he pretty much left is that he believed in the lotus order and what they stood for and he thinks having to resort to essentially what the Lotus Assassins have done makes somebody weak. And because the Lotus Assassins slash Lotus Order were meant to reflect the Emperor and the and every action that Death Hands take uh, takes uh, is tacitly approved by the Emperor according to Zhu. Leanne doesn't believe so, but according to Zhu, because the Emperor approves every action... The Emperor is being seen as weak in his eyes, and because this is very much like, I guess we can, I guess we can say this is pretty much China, uh, China based, like, like, like based on like Ch Chinese history and Chinese tradition, where the Emperor is essentially a god, and you don't question a god. That thought alone is uncomfortable to Zhu, and that's what we're learning from him. Let's talk to uh, let's talk to Dawnstar. The Imperial City. I'd always heard how impressive it was. The stories didn't do it justice. This is all so much to absorb. I would appreciate your counsel if you have time to speak privately. Better time to speak, Dawnstar. What did you wish? I don't mean to distract you. 
I just wanted someone familiar around me for a moment, if only to reassure me that we are still in the Empire I thought I knew. I have long dreamed of reaching the Imperial City, but now that I have, under these circumstances, I am more overwhelmed than ever. I'm glad you were with me. We are a long way from home. But that's what is bothering me. We can't be a long way from home because our home is gone. I can no longer say that what I see is strange or foreign because I have lost what I would have compared it to. I am the one out of place now. Okay, we're back to another romance. So, you can take a neutral approach, an intimidating approach, or the flirty approach. Then my home will be where you are and you can say the same with me. I... I would like that. To know you will be there no matter what. I've never had that stability. At least not before joining the school. As a child, I was marked by ill omens, apparently named for them. The people in Two Rivers were polite, but many did not hide the discomfort I caused them. I was watched, studied. If someone's ox died within a season of me bumping my head, it was somehow my fault, and I was treated like a pariah. How do you deal with being able to sense the spirit world when people make such absurd conclusions? Well, it is not your burden to try to belong when you are not wanted. I... I cannot change who I am, I know. Perhaps I just have to let all of that go. It will not be easy. But I do feel that you have given me a strength I did not have before. I very much appreciate your support. We should continue this discussion later. I have much to think about, and our work here has only just begun. The Imperial City. I never dreamed I would reach it. Okay, let's go to my other questions. Um... Well, as I believe we have essentially two conversations we can catch up on very by, so did you want to talk? Your feelings are very important to me. I don't want to seem ungrateful for her help. But having Silk Fox here is causing me some concern. I mean, she is the daughter of the Emperor, and we do not know his role in Master Li's capture. Can she be trusted? What concerns you? She has shown only goodwill. To you, perhaps, but not to me. I think I am perceived as a rival, but no one has told me what the game is. Dawnstar, she's jealous of you. The princess? The daughter of the emperor is jealous of me? <laughs> I think the size of our task has addled your senses. What could I possibly have that would make her jealous? What does a woman from the Borderlands have that the princess herself does not? My interest. What? I'm sorry. You caught me off guard for a moment. You didn't know? I offered counsel often enough. You have always been a good friend to me, but I never meant... I, I mean, I couldn't... No. No, I should have more control over this. This is too uncertain. You can't manipulate me into admitting something like this. Not when you can leave whenever you want. So we have a, so I have a couple of uh, responses here. Uh, I, th I believe two are essentially romance ones and two are since you being a jerk. Uh, so this one I think is a little bit more pushy. This one, I, I want to go with this one this time. I usually go with the first one. Let's go with this one this time. They've already established that we have no home. How can I leave? Don't juggle your words. I am not amused by it. You know very well what I mean. It's probably at the front of your mind all the time, for all I know. You feel the end of what has barely begun. Where does this reluctance come from? I prefer to have more control over myself, and as much control over what goes on around me as possible. Silk Fox, or whatever she wants to be called, is an unknown I can't compensate for. I can't stay in balance if I don't know what she represents. You and I, we talk and share thoughts, but she... 
forces me to consider where that might lead, both good and bad. I'm not ready for that. See, no one is pressuring you except you. That says more than your words. This one feels more like gaslighting more than anything else. But yeah, we'll go with this one. So Silk so Fox. So Silk so Fox forced you to consider where our talks might lead. I'll have to thank I will have to thank her. Uh, don't you dare! Oh, you tease so much, I don't know what to do with you. You have become so different since we left Two Rivers. Or perhaps it is me. For all the trouble we face, I feel like a weight is lifting. I think we will have a great deal more to discuss in the coming days. I'm looking forward to it. Until then, thank you for being so understanding. Master Lee was right. You are special. Okay, uh, that's anything else? That is not really necessary right now. Although I do enjoy the attention. We have come so far together. Thank you for that. Okay, I'll go back for now. Don't go too far. I'd get lost in this city. I know it. So yeah, so basically we're at a point now to where we have two love rivals. We could technically have three. As the male protagonist, you technically have three love interests. I've gone over this slightly beforehand. I, I want to go ahead and expand upon this now while we got a chance here. When you're the male, when you're a male character, you have Dawnstar as a love interest. The classic childhood friend becomes your lover thing. And I feel as a male character, you're kind of railroaded into this option because the only other two love interests you get are Silk Fox, who you don't get to properly interact with in any kind of meaningful manner until you get to the Imperial City. And once you get to the Imperial City, I'll let you know right now, you're effectively halfway through the game. You've effectively spent half the game Getting to know Dawnstar, and now you have this random um, love interest that comes next. And then you have, well, Sky. Sky is the is the gay romance option for Jade Empire. And you know we'll get more properly into what that means later on. But yeah, Sky is a character that you can have a gay romance option with. If you are a female character, you only get two romance options: Sky. And Silk Fox. Sun Lian and Sky are bisexual. According to how the love interests play out. When I play a, play a male character because I'm a guy, I always go for Dawnstar. When I play a female character because I'm a guy, I go for Silk Fox. And it's weird how they did this because this technically isn't Bioware's first time doing a doing a gay character. It's not. The earliest one that I know of is Juhani from the National Republic, and when I get around to playing that game, I'll definitely be breaking that up. But, yeah. So, depending on how things go, depending on who you prefer, because at this point, it's all down to personality. Um, and, you know, as you get more and more into it, we can talk more and more about each each, uh, each of the interest personalities. I, all of this, is I previously ignore Sky, I don't really know too much of about him. He just seems like a tortured soul. Uh, Dawnstar has separation anxiety for all intents and purposes. He does not like uncertainty and stability and being separated. And Sun Lian, well, you're kind of seeing it as is. She can be very pushy, very forceful due to her upbringing as a princess, but she also is, but she's, but she's, well, I think she's just very spirited. You could kind of make out that she's kind of high maintenance, but I don't know myself. Now, going from there, let's talk to Wildflower, see what she has to say. There is something here. Some evil thing has happened here. It beats on my mind and the Guardian, he can't hold it back. No, I will not let you do this. Not now. You can't stop me from being here. 
I may not be able to leave, but I can talk and see. I see you, mortal. I've been watching you. You must be the other. Ha! I am Yasen, the other of whom Chai Ka and this girl speak. They have suppressed me ever since we inhabited this body. But this place is different. The evil around me has given me strength. For now, at least. And has opened potential doors. I don't claim to goodness, mortal. I hate your kind. But we can work together. If you help me, I shall help you. And I'll be much more valuable than the Guardian. What about the girl? Bah! Who cares about her? She's just another insect. This is about what I can offer you when the time comes. What? No! Chaika! You won't make me go! No! Woe, Oka Wunir Ilakir Nofum Ponir Shakir Wowo Sir Nikor Pak. You stay below, Yazid. You won't harm this girl or this world. And you, Spirit Monk, avoid him. For the sake of this girl, don't let him out. I'm sorry. We were fighting again. I'll be all right. Soon. Just, just give me time and I'll be all right. So yeah. Now, if we go into our, into our followers list. Oh, never mind. It's not there. So next to Chai Ka, you get another portrait of a demon called Yazen. I'm letting you know right now, he's a toad demon. That's basically it. There's nothing unique in terms of in terms of Yazen. Now Yazen in terms of uh, Chai Ka. So it's kind of a letdown in that regard. Let's talk to the wildfire again. What do you want? What do you think of our current situation? That strong lady? She's the princess? I didn't know that women could be that strong. We're always supposed to be weak and left behind. You are not weak, Wildflower. You are as strong as any woman I have ever known. Trust in yourself, and you, mortal, treat her tenderly. Okay, Dad, what the fuck? <laughs> Is there anything else you want? Um, what do you think about our current situation? That strong Okay, so yeah, never mind. Uh, are you alright with the demons inside you? They don't come out very much. The Guardian protects me and keeps the other inside. When the other tries to get out, it feels like my head is going to tear itself apart. That must be very hard on you. Yes, but the Guardian has always been with me, and I trust him. The other one has been there too, but smaller. They won't say why. They say we have to be with you now. Hush, child. I will speak for now. This child has been chosen as the vessel to allow me into the mortal realm. My gate into the world and I am her protector. Okay. Why did you choose her? The amulet you carry had been hidden in the village by the last of the spirit monks, and the whole area flooded. Those remaining behind died, and it was lost forever. But the dam had opened. But the dam had opened again, and the water receded. I am bound to protect this amulet, but to exist in this world, balance is needed with good, evil. With life, death. Of those who died there, I chose this one as my host. She was reborn through my power and I within her. But balance required that my heavenly presence have an opposite. Wildflower is dead? We needed a host, and she was there. I did not expect balance to require that both I and Yazen be within her. It is almost too much for her to bear. 
o Yakub Tiir, o Kir Ayiyuir. We are both here in Sihir, but Yazin is different. He cares nothing for the Amnon or the girl, and would gladly sacrifice her to escape. Ha! You care too much for this whelp. O Kir Okiir wo Kup Thithir Sunurk, o Kipipir so Ir Tatasi. Quiet. Hey, quiet! Stay inside. Do not mention these things a wildfire spirit monk. She is only dimly aware of her past, and this knowledge would harm her further. Okay! Bombshell the century! Wildflower's a corpse! <laughs> Being possessed by two demons! A heavenly one and a toad demon! Oh dear god! Um... Do you feel any spirits here? There are spirits everywhere here in the city. Ghosts live inside of the people who remember them, just a little. Everyone has that spark, except for me. I have no one inside of me, except for the guardian and the other. But some of these people, the ghosts inside them cause so much pain. I can't see any spirits. <laughs> of course, silly. They're inside people. The Guardian can hear them, though, and so can I. The ones that hurt? The spirits have such sad stories. The people don't know, though. All they understand is that they feel bad, but they don't know why. When you feel bad for no reason, you might have touched one of them. The city is old. So old. And so many people have lived and died here. There are spirits everywhere. I guess I can understand why so many of them feel so bad all the time. But we shouldn't talk about this so much. Who knows how much will draw their attention. We should keep going. Is there anything else you want? Oh, I guess I'll, I'll talk to Demons with Pindu again. I... I... Oh! It's time you and I had a talk, mortal. You've been paying too much attention to this girl's problems and the Guardian's advice. We need more realism here. Like, I have nothing to say to you. After finding out what happens every time he forced way to the service to this little girl, I have nothing to say to you, dude. You know I'm evil and want to kill everything. I know I'm evil and want to kill everything. Why quibble about details? You help me, and I help you. And I want out. The girl is already dead. She's a walking corpse. She's nothing to anyone. What I want is the body. I need an anchor, and this little walking meat puppet can provide that. But Tykar gives me trouble. He's in my way. He's weak, but the girl sides with him. To take control, I need your help, and I'm willing to offer servitude for it. Like, I won't let you harm this girl. Ha! You say that now. But when the time comes, we'll see how much power tempts you. And if you continue to refuse, I still have ways to get my revenge. Back into the darkness, Yasin. You tricked me so I wouldn't hear you talking, but no more. Very monk, it is unwise to speak with him. He knows only lies and deceit. For the sake of the child, have no further dealings with him. He gets stronger now. He might be able to force his way out, or be called. Resist him. Do not listen to him. And I believe with that, we actually do gain him as a... Yes, we do. And eh? see? Now, here's the thing. He does the exact same support moves as Chai Ka. He's literally only there if you're going for an evil playthrough. That's it. He's just the he's just the closed fist counterpart to Chai Ka. Uh, a hideous demon using Wildflower's body as an anchor. Yazin tears two enemies with his claws and tongue. Yeah, and everyone else he has a little antidote. Um, you know, is is as enigmatic as she is beautiful. When her longsword is not flashing from foe to foe, she lends her skill to you. Now, her support lets you deal extra damage with martial styles. I didn't go over this beforehand, but... So, 
as you can see, we are missing, looks like just one more um, companion and one more support companion. So a Dawn Star, her support lets you recover Chi. With um, Sagacious Zoo, you do more damage with your weapons. Black Whirlwind has no support skills. Sky lets you recover your focus. So if you're a weapon user and you have Sky out with you, you can recover your focus while he's in support mode. Hinpeto has no attack. All he does is drop just let's use another fighting style. In Chai Khan, Yazin, the same thing. He's a dashing rogue and a speed thief, but the tongue that shocked us to twin fingers in combat. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. So where are we at now? Okay, so we talked to pretty much the girls of our group and Sue. So let's talk to Impact Ho. How you do, my dude? I can't believe my luck. I arrive home after being lost, only to find that my wife has gone off to visit relatives. I thought you'd be happy. I am very happy indeed. Instead of dying upon my return home, I am free. Until she returns, of course. What are your thoughts on that situation? I think you need somebody like me to keep your camp in order while you're off invading the fortress. I can make sure there's some hot soup waiting for you. Turtle egg soup, perhaps. Now, there's a thought. Where did I put those turtle eggs? Why did you marry your wife if she's so difficult? Like many things in my life, it can be traced back to very bad luck on my part. As I mentioned once before, I was a master of the drunken master style. I was the tournament champion in Phoenix Gate when things spun out of control. My need for wine took its toll on my body. There are long periods I don't even remember. After one such period, I came to, having lost most of my clothes and all my money. I was destitute, and without the ability to buy more wine, I couldn't even fight. Wine is a dangerous companion. Eventually, I found work cleaning out creature cages at the local arena. One day, I was approached by a man who remembered seeing me fight. He offered to sponsor me. Just like that, I was back in the ring. After climbing my way back to the top of the tournament, my sponsor told me it was time to fulfill my end of the bargain. Yes, there's always a catch, isn't there? Apparently, the agreement stipulated that I must marry his niece. If only I had read the agreement more closely, I could still be shoveling dirt in the creature cages. Alas, fate had a crueler path in mind for me. Let that be a lesson for you. Always read the fine print, or you may end up with more than you bargained for. Why did you become a bun master if you were a master fighter? You're beginning to sound like my wife. Where were you last night? Why were you talking to that woman? Why do you smell like a goat? Always with the question. As I mentioned earlier, after becoming tournament champion for the second time, I was forced to marry my sponsor's nubile niece. She is the reason I no longer fight. My disapproving dub did not care for my drinking, or for my friends, or my fighting, or my friends fighting. She believed I should settle down, be more respectable. Oh, you need to learn to stand up for yourself, my dude! At first I ignored her rebukes and continued fighting, but I soon learned that she was not a woman to be crossed. Prior to one fight, my duplicitous daisy drugged my wine. I don't remember much of what happened next, which is fortunate. From what I hear, it wasn't very pretty. Poor ho. You whipped my friend. I spent the next several months under the tender ministrations of my doting wife. Needless to say, when I was well enough to walk again, I was more than happy to settle down. As to why I became a bun master, well, it's a hard, thankless job that keeps me very, very busy. Very busy. Well, tell me more about yourself, huh? Not now. Memories of my wife are difficult to bear. Especially when I am here and she could be so far, far, far away. Okay, uh, thanks. That's all for now. As you say, I will be here scrubbing your pots until you call upon me again. Okay, then I guess that solves that one. Um, I guess next we'll talk to Sky. How's it going, my dude? Always happy to help. 
What do you need? What's on your mind right now? I haven't been to the Imperial City in a while. I traveled here some time ago in my hunt for Gao. In fact, this is where the hunt began. I've come full circle, and I think it's time to let go of the past and look forward. We have exciting things ahead of us. The thought of all these nobles and their fat purses is making you giddy. There won't be much time for that sort of diversion, but I can't help see the potential. <sighs> In my heart, I know my daughter rests as easily as any spirit now. Whatever happens, I have that. And if we succeed, I know she finds peace. If I could go back, I don't know if I would. I'm a different man now, and while I treasure the past, I look forward to the future with the same warmth. You realize you may not have a future if you follow me. Bah. We'll find a way through any troubles. We're too resourceful to roll over and die. I'm excited to be back in the city. It feels like we're one step closer to our goal, but you know that better than anyone. You brought us to this point after all. Who else could have gathered this crew or found such a quick way out of Tien's landing? Don't discount yourself or the others. How do you manage that kind of humility? Some sort of special training? I'm the protagonist. I'm just that naturally humble. <laughs> you can't be perfect unless you're humble about it too, you know. Uh, see, I, can take time. I, I just take the time to appreciate those who are with me or... Oh yes, years of intense meditation are required before you can do something nice. <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, no, I just take the time to appreciate those who are with me. And there you have it. A simple answer is usually the best. Regardless, we have an empire to shake up. Let's go see how much trouble we can cause. So, uh, what are your thoughts on our situation? I'll be honest. I can't think of anything I haven't said already. Alright, uh, talk to you. Uh, what's on your mind right now? Dawnstar has been telling me about two rivers, the Swamp and Gao the Lesser. I was sorry to hear about your town and your friends. It brought a question to mind. There's something I've been meaning to ask you. Why? Seriously, why are you doing this? Details aside, you're fighting the Empire as a whole when you oppose the Lotus Assassin's Death's Hand or the Emperor's Will. I know all about your village and your master, and that explains some of it. What it doesn't explain is your drive, your strength. What gives you that? People are suffering. I'm going to find out why and fix it. I wonder if fate cast this burden upon you, or if you rose up on your own to shoulder it. History will probably decide. I know you're going to follow Silk Fox's plans to find a way into the Assassin's Den. It won't be easy, but I'm confident we'll succeed. It's what happens after you find a way in that has me worried. Why the concern? I knew men and women who were drawn to the Lotus Assassins. They went into that place to prove themselves, as you intend to. And the few who made it back out were... different. They'll have to kill me before they change me. That's reassuring to hear. I'm afraid of what would happen if they convinced you that their way is right. I know you'll be fine. The Assassins will be lucky if you don't bring the place down around their ears. Just be sure not to tip your hand before you're ready. That's all in the future, though. We should keep it what we're doing. There's a lot left to tackle before we're done. Alright, uh, I'll talk to you later, Scar. Of course. I'll be here if you need anything. So yeah, it's kind of, so yeah, so we, so you get a little bit more about Scott. He's essentially the worried parent of the group. I mean, if you think about it, if you really think about how this works, Zeus the Zeus the grumpy uncle who is looking after you, but he's like, you're not really my problem, but I know if I don't keep an eye on you, something's gonna happen, and I'm going to feel really bad when it does. How's that? 
Who is that one uncle who lived the most exciting life ever, and he wants to tell you some of the stories, but he really doesn't want to get into it because it's just how crazy it gets. Dawn stars the overprotective sister. Soap Fox is pretty much the fun-loving younger sister. Well, that's fun-loving with the rebellious younger sister. Sky is the Sky is no, actually, Soap Fox. I, I would say is the uh, is the um is more the rebellious middle sister, whereas. Wildflower is the adorable uh, uh, younger sister that she just kind of tag along with us. You know, she's just too dang nice to say no to. Sky is the overprotective parent. And then there's, then there's Black Rowan, the fun uncle. What's up, dude? What? What do you want? Uh, we should talk about your time in the Imperial Arena. No, I don't think so. I've told you to watch your back, and that's all you need to hear for now. If anything needs to be done beyond that, I'll do it. If you remember from the previous episode, Black Rowan came to watch some fights and to make sure, according to what he said, talking to Kui, that nothing happens to us. What do you mean by what would need to be done? I don't know. Hopefully nothing. But I'm keeping my eyes open. You just carry on and know that the Black Whirlwind's got your back. Not literally, of course. I respect you too much to go grabbing anything posterior. If you're keeping something from me, I need to know. Well, forget it. Let's move on to, our, let's move on to something else. Good idea. You've got bigger things to worry about than me anyway. Not much bigger, mind you. Um, so what are your thoughts on our situation? Nothing's changed since the last time you asked me. Unless I passed out. Did I pass out? No, how could I? I haven't been drinking. That's all for now. Whatever. Well, let's ask him one more thing. Um, tell me something about your past. I remember one time I was hired by two warring clans. They were going to discuss a peace treaty, and they wanted me to make sure things didn't get out of hand. A bunch of fights broke out in the first few days, but after I killed a few dozen of their clansmen, they settled down. That's when things got boring. The leaders took the next three days to talk and talk, and if they hadn't let me dip into their wine stocks, I might have snapped sooner than I did. Why couldn't they reach a peaceful agreement? Like, I'm surprised you lasted that long. The clan leaders were agreed on peace except for one thing, Jin Lo, a beautiful clanswoman. Both leaders wanted her and neither would give her up. After five days it looked like the peace would fall apart. It looked like the two leaders were about to come to blows over Jin Lo, so I stepped in. It was my job to stop them from fighting. So, I cleaved the wench in two and told them each to take a half. <laughs> Seemed like a good idea at the time. Jesus, dude! I don't I don't know how to respond to this. You're a brute woman, how could you do it? <laughs> it was easy. She was small, and my blades are extremely sharp. But it didn't really help, though. They weren't too happy with my decision. Everyone turned on me. Of course, they all died, but they gave it a good effort. I don't know what they were so upset about. Better a quick death by the sword than the prolonged agony of your heart being ripped from your chest and thrown to the dog. Damn. Uh, I'd like to hear more about your past. Not now. I'm done talking about myself. Let's go do something fun, like kill someone. Like I said, the fun uncle of all the fun stories. Whatever. Um, and I guess at this point, we're going to call it a part here for now. And open up next part with talking to Kang the Mad. You might be wondering why why that's the case. Well, you'll find out next time. Have a nice, you've been awesome, and I'll catch you later.